Welcome back guys, have you ever heard that Bitcoin is this perfect tool for criminals because Bitcoin is an anonymous currency that they can use and do their nefarious activities without getting caught? Well, it is completely wrong because today I will be showing you the tools you need to have if you want to track criminals on the blockchain. You need to understand that Bitcoin is the most open currency in the world. All transactions are being written to the blockchain and they are stuck in the blockchain forever and anyone can try to analyze them and anyone can try to make sense of the different money flows that are happening. Anyone can follow the money flows in real time. And today I will be showing you the tools that the police, FBI, IRS and other law enforcement agencies are using today. So we'll be using the latest technologies out there. So that being said, let's look at, at a very interesting transaction. We'll be looking at a criminal transaction that happened on the blockchain uh, in, in May. So this was uh, 7th May 2019. And as you can see, we have uh, millions and millions of dollars being transmitted. All in all, approximately $53 million being sent. And uh, if you convert that to Bitcoin, approximately 7,000 uh, Bitcoin. And uh, this is the address that is getting drained. As you can see, this is the address that is creating all of these inputs to the Bitcoin transaction. And then the money from this, from this one particular address is just being split up and sent to these different addresses right here. Now, if we look at what kind of address this is, we can use just a normal block explorer, for example, blockchain.com or whatever block explorer you want to really. But if we look at this address, you quickly understand that this is not a normal address because it has so many transactions going in and out all the time. All in all, this address has uh, received over 7 million Bitcoin, 7 million Bitcoin and sent over 7 million Bitcoin as well. So this is an exchange address. And uh, more, more precisely, this is an address that belongs to, to Binance. This is a Binance uh, wallet. And here is where Binance hold their, hold their crypto. So we do see a significant hack that happened because this is a hack. If you look at what happened to, uh, to Bitcoin and you look at um, the news, you look at uh, a particular uh, period in time, we, you quickly understand that this was indeed a, a hack because if you go to Google and then you go to news and you search uh, in May what happened to Bitcoin, you see that uh, Binance was hacked. Now I get results in Swedish, but uh, you, you see that uh, hackers stole 40 million of Bitcoin from one of the world's largest exchanges. So this, this is a Binance hack that happened. Now, what kind of tools can we use in order to track this? How can we be a bit smart and how can we see what is happening on the blockchain? Now, there's a brilliant tool that I recommend everyone to learn if you're interested in this. You go to Google or you just open your web browser and then you search OXT.me. You go into the address field and you enter OXT.me and you go here. Now, it will tell you that you need a res uh, bigger resolution, just zoom out, well, because I have it in a side window. Uh, so this is oxt.me. Now, the good thing is here is that if we copy the transaction ID, the hash of this transaction, we can get a very, very nice visual representation. So I click here and then I paste the transaction ID and then I search. And I get some information, I mean basically the same information I get in the blockchain.com explorer, but the good thing here is this little button right here, tools. If you click here, you will be getting a visual representation of this transaction. This is very important. So here's the transaction, but we don't get a lot of information. Uh, if I just hover over this transaction, let me actually zoom in a bit so you can see better. Uh, so this is a tool that, by the way, law enforcement will use. So if I hover over this transaction, I see how much Bitcoin is sent and what block it is, basically. And that's it. But if I double click, I will be getting a lot of interesting information. <laughs> I will be getting a lot, a lot of interesting information. So what are we seeing right here? We're seeing crazy stuff. But this is basically this information right here being visualized in, in a graphical way. So as you can see, we do have arrows pointing into this circle and arrows po pointing out of this circle. So this circle in the middle is the actual transaction. So this circle in the middle is is basically the transaction, the this one, and the transaction has a bunch of inputs, basically money being put into the transaction, and this is all the arrows that are pointing inwards, and then you have a few arrows point, pointing outwards, for example, this one, or for example, this one. And the uh, arrows pointing outwards are these transactions. Because in Bitcoin, you know, you can send uh, money from uh, many different people to many different people in one transaction, because you can 
pull money from many different addresses and then you can send money to many different addresses all in one because you have inputs and then you have outputs. It's very special. This is not how your bank, bank works. In your bank, you just have sender and receiver. In Bitcoin, you can have a bunch of different senders and a bunch of different receivers. But here you do have one address basically being used for all the inputs and then different addresses for outputs. But what's interesting now is that we can try to see what is happening to this money. I mean, where do all of these uh, outputs go? As you can see, the fat arrows will indicate you the big the big outputs. So, I mean, this is uh, quite a big arrow. And in order to remember what we have seen, I, I recommend using this che uh, ch check mark right here because if I click it, now it will be colored. So, if you see this this um, output is sending away. Uh, 500 Bitcoin, but there are several outputs. I mean, this output is sending away 300 Bitcoin. Let's mark that. Uh, let's see what else we got. Uh uh, another output right here, sending away 400 Bitcoin. And what we can try to do is to try to see, okay, what is happening next? And we can try to follow the trail of this money. So as you can see, we, uh, we get money flowing from this hack in one transaction here. And then we're, we have another uh, input also being used in this transaction right here from the hack. So we, we do have two inputs that are, that, are, uh, that are consisting of hacked money, this one and this one. So basically they are pulling all the money from the hack that happened right here into, uh, into another transaction that, and we can all follow it. So if I now check, we do have this flow of money right here. Let's try to see other flows of money that, that, is, that are going from the same transaction. Okay, here's another one. Let's see where that one is going. Uh, so just double click and, and we can uh, get a, a good understanding. Also try to mar mark all of them. Uh, so that you can clearly see later on. So this and then like this. So we have some money going in that direction, some money going in that direction. So we do have two big outflows. So here we have an outflow for 1000 Bitcoin being uh, being uh, uh, transacted into, <laughs> into nowhere basically, because uh, all of these transactions happened after the hack, but you can still follow them. And so you have one trail right here, then you have a second trail right here. And then you can see how this hacker is trying to, is trying to make it look so that uh, from the outside, you cannot see which, which amounts are hacked and which are not hacked. So we do see two big trails over here, this trail and that trail. And so what you can do is just sit here and try to find more trails. So for example, here's another arrow going outwards. Let's see where this one goes. Uh, they are pulling money together here and then they get another trail right here. So you can, you can follow that and uh, all in all, this is kind of the method uh, you're using. Here's another potentially big transaction. Yes, so this, this one is big. 1000 Bitcoin being pulled away. Yes, here, here it is. So as you can see now, we, we, have, we have a good understanding. There are basically four ma main channels that the money is flowing through. And the, each of this, I mean, this channel is 1000 Bitcoin. This channel right here carries 1000 Bitcoin. This channel right here is 700. So you can click around and you can find the other, uh, the other channels as well, because all in all, we do see 7000 Bitcoin being stolen. So now we can, we can kind of visually see where, uh, where two, 3000 is going because we have 1000, 1000, and then 700, uh, or actually here we have another one. Let's, let's, let's check this one. Yeah, yeah, so we have 1k here, we have 1k here, we have 1k here, and then we have 7. So 4,000, 4,000 Bitcoin all in all is just moving from here, uh, from the stolen funds into these other, uh, other clusters. And so what you will soon find is that the behavior of these transactions is quite... Uh, quite interesting because if, if we just follow one of these trails, what they're doing is just trying to split this money into smaller and smaller addresses. And it is not a normal behavior for a normal Bitcoin user to just constantly try to uh, try to uh, break this money up and, uh, and put it into smaller and smaller addresses. So let's say that you are an exchange. Let's say that you, for example, you, you are a Coinbase and suddenly you get a deposit of uh, 
of, uh, let's see, this is your deposit that you're getting. You get a deposit of 42 Bitcoin. Using tools like OXT.me, you can have a compliance person who can visually track this back and quite easily discover this, discover this connection. And then he can just go to news and see, okay, what the heck happened? I mean, what is this big ass transaction uh, for 7,000 Bitcoin? Then you can just go to news and you can find this. So therefore, with tools like this, with being able to visually see uh, where the money is going and be able to, uh, to, to to sit here and try to understand the flows of money, the job of IRS, the police, FBI is so much easier. And that is, by the way, how they got um, the one of the largest sites for child uh, abuse through transactions and through uh, understanding how bit Bitcoin transactions are connected and who is using what kind of money. But all in all, I mean, in one way, I find this beautiful because we're really going deep into the blockchain and we're seeing exactly what's happening. And without tools like OXT.me, that wouldn't be possible. And what's funny is that actually you, you might imagine that this is a tool created by uh, by the police or law enforcement. But it's, it's funny, it's actually created by Samurai Wallet. And you know the Samurai Wallet is one of these wallets that works a lot with privacy. Because if you use Samurai Wallet, you want to be as private as possible. So they basically made this tool so that if you want to be private, you can practice here and you can... <laughs> <laughs> you can see how how people might be following your transactions. But it is quite interesting. And you also get this kind of living organism uh, drawn visually, which is the money flows in, in Bitcoin. And if you follow, follow them uh, long enough, you see that they are trying to split it into smaller and smaller parts. But if you are an exchange, you are legally ob ob obligated to not accept money from uh, from hacks, for example. You're, you're, not, you're, you're legally ob obligated to know where the money of your customers is coming from. So this, th that being said, uh, we do have some Bitcoins being worth more than other Bitcoin. Because you understand that if it is the case that I, ha I have one of these Bitcoin right here, I have one of these 355 Bitcoin, I might not be able to, uh, to sell them easily. Because look, if I, if I put them on an exchange, suddenly everyone will know who I am because exchanges need KYC. And therefore, they might not even be able to accept my coins, but that doesn't even matter because if I do KYC, I will be caught. This is the like the, the mindset of a criminal, how they will be thinking because it's so easy to track it back to this hack right here. So this means that these coins might be sold in OTC deals these coins might be sold uh, just uh, on local Bitcoin or something because they, th these coins might be sold to someone who will just take them and and uh, have this risk instead, have this risk of not being able to sell them later on on exchanges. So we basically have a bifurcation, a split in the in the network when it comes to coins, because some coins you can sell easily, some coins you cannot sell easily because they have a bad trace. So this is both good and bad. I mean, the good thing is that it's so transparent and you can see where the dirty money is going and where it's coming from. But the bad thing is that uh, Bitcoin is not really fungible uh, because you can track the, where, where the money is coming from. And so some Bitcoin is worth less than other Bitcoin. And uh, they might try to sell it to people who don't really know where that money is coming from. For example, on local Bitcoin, they might try to sell this, uh, this money, for th this Bitcoin for a bit cheaper. And then you will see people buying quickly because... I mean, if you if, if the criminals try to sell this 355 Bitcoin for like 5K somewhere, they will find buyers. They will find buyers who will not do this kind of analysis. And then the, the those buyers will just try to deposit on exchanges and they might in turn get questions. You know, what, where the hell is this money from? Why is it connected to Binance hack? And while you as a buyer, like a second tier buyer of the of these coins, or maybe you sold a service or maybe you sold a good, I mean, you might you may try to explain to the exchanges that, hey, this is honest money, I just bought it from a guy on local Bitcoin, the exchange might still say, hey, we don't really trust you. I mean, you yourself might not get in trouble, but you might still get attention from law enforcement. They might still check it. But it's also the question, I mean, if you have dirty coins, how many steps do you need to go for them to become clean? Uh, how many hands do they need to change? But obviously, if you have these dirty coins, for example, you bought them from somewhere, 
I mean, you, you better be having some kind of documentation for that, that you actually have a receipt or you have a, uh, some kind of invoice that you have performed the service because otherwise, how will you prove that you did not actually hack Binance? I mean, how will you be able to, uh, to, uh, to defend yourself? I mean, these are questions that uh, many people don't think about, but, but it's important. Anyway, guys, I hope you understand a bit better. I hope you understand a bit more what is happening. Uh, that being said, Leave your questions if you have any questions in the comment section and I'll see you all very, very soon. Have a good day and goodbye, guys. Goodbye, goodbye.